I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, let's well, let's see some Rubinstein because uh, yesterday when I when I brought up that story of Georg Meyer just publishing his files to prevent people from playing a specific line of the Rubinstein against him, uh, so that people don't bore him. Chat was saying the other way not to get bored is not to play the Rubinstein at all, which is sort of fair. But on the other hand, it is surprisingly sharp if White wants it. There and we have it on lines, the board. Yeah, there's definitely some lines in Rubinstein where play could become very, very concrete and very, very sharp. So uh, it, it is absolutely not a given that this will be uh, uh, some, kind of a, some kind of a boring game. Not at all. And C3 is played immediately. Okay, C3, C3 exists, but I'm, I'm a little bit curious about this. Like, what are we trying to achieve compared to, uh, to Knight of 3? It's difficult for me to imagine uh, the, the G1 Knight being developed to any square other than F3. If we're having some issues, we're having some issues. Those are, those are the, the, the breaks. Um, yes, exactly. I, I just can't play them. Yeah, I, I can see you trying to play Bishop D3 and uh, yeah. the... <laughs> the machine telling you no, uh, which is a bit a bit frustrating, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. You yeah, immediately and, hit me with c5, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I know I think, yeah, exactly. And I was going to say we're also now we have the option of putting the bishop on c2 instead of d3, which is maybe a little bit better. Georg figure it out, although he still is playing quite quickly. And honestly, knowing Georg, it's very possible that he's looked at c3 at some point in his life, while. We're also watching uh, the, the footage from the playing hole. We discussed it yesterday when the playing hole was empty and it was even more obvious. But this is a very nice, uh, you know, spacious, uh, spacious hole, plenty of space between the boards, which is very important. Slightly different uh, French uh, that he got against Magnus. This is still, I believe, a theoretical position, but with the bishop on d3, right? So the difference is uh, the bishop is on c2, which I guess... If black plays naively, like if you castle here, for instance, yeah, and bishop g5, you play something solid like uh weird that what's happening ah uh, yeah so bishop g5 bishop g7 you want to play bishop c6 you want to play queen d5 something like that and now i play queen d3 and now there is a difference between the bishop on d3 and the bishop on c2 a pretty large difference this position might be just straight up bad for black now because i think maybe the best move is rook e8 just giving up the pawn h7 with check uh, because otherwise you have to play g6 maybe, and that's even worse. Uh, but Meyer still quite quickly uh, plays uh, b7, b6, which is an interesting move, considering that you can't really play bishop b7 with a king on e8, right? Because bishop a4 check will be painful. What will black do after, after a move like bishop a4 check later, the bishop b7? What did Magnus do? Magnus opted for queen d3. Yeah, if you play queen d3... Yeah, instead of bishop g5, which I think is a more flexible choice because it, it keeps your options more open. Uh, castling is still completely unplayable because of bishop g5. Uh, but we're also kind of hinting maybe at queen g3, which could be a very awkward move for black to face in some situations. Wow. Okay, that's that's. thank you very much because as a commentator with all these games, uh, spotting a for rook a3 and knowing that this is so important, it's almost impossible, yeah. Yeah, and also just to highlight that, yeah, it's very important that the timing, yeah, that after Queen mm -hmm. D5, we have Rook G3 protecting, attacking yeah. at the same time, and, and thanks to this, White is having the upper yeah, if hand. Wow. If Queen D5 was forcing us to play F3, this entire idea is dead. But yes. we're just in time to, uh, to play Rook G3 here, and yeah, Black, Black seems to be in a uh, in decent amount of trouble, actually. Bishop B7, Bishop A4, check King F8 finally was played, Bishop D2 h5 a very typical Aha, way of so he chose this way to finish development he goes h5 magnus completely ignores it he goes h4 of course ignoring h3 would be strange so he goes yeah h3 is and now black has the option of playing rook h5 and uh bringing that rook into the game via via that square yeah Roland he went between d6 and magnus anyway so it was not only we who didn't know exactly how to treat this position yeah yeah rook d8 Rook e1, king g8, bishop e3. Well, I mean, I'm actually liking black's position. Yeah, I think black is completely fine. I mean, you have to pay attention that, like, in some endgames, the pawn on h4 could become a target, but we are very, very far away from any endgame for now. Down to 17 minutes versus 22. It will escalate. It will lead to some big-time scramble. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. 
Okay, so even this structure change happened, and finally the rook is out of uh, the box. But Georg is not an easy opponent for Magnus. I guess you actually start with bishop g4, because like if you play bishop f3 here, I take, I go e6, e5. I want to claim that maybe black is even a little bit better. So I would like to provoke f5 so that in the same position the pawn and f5 will be hanging. Yeah, and he's done to a minute. Yeah, if something, he, if he needs to calculate something, then... I mean, he still has king h7. It's not like he blundered rook f8 check, clearly. I mean, it's uh, it's still still kind of fine. Rook d8, queen d8, queen f5 check. I guess we just go... You can even go king h6 if you want, I suppose. Yeah, it's on the board. Yeah. Okay, but, but Georg lost his stability, yeah? Yeah, this is this... definitely... This is definitely not, uh, you know, the cleanest way to, to, to make This it is exactly what Mag you should mm. never do against Magnus. I mean, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. might play rook c4. Uh, come on, what is this? Queen takes d8. If I play rook c4 targeting this h4 pawn, how yeah, you ever it's, untangle? Yeah, it's very annoying. It's just very, very annoying because, yeah, it's, it's so difficult to make moves. But yeah, Magnus goes queen f5 check. Okay. I mean... I'm most curious, like, the, the, the biggest question for me is, why, if, you, if you want to play e5, why are you not playing e5 here? Why are you waiting for rook g3, queen f2? Yes. What is, what is going on? Is, is Georg surviving? It's going to be very similar to the line that we were just showing. I think it's going to be very, very... Uh, and apparently, for, for, for some reason, we don't actually have access to, uh, to that camera. And I want to point out that, uh, sort of, as in a kind of a, a additional annoyance for, for Georg, if let's say the queens get traded on the g5 square and black has to take with the king for instance like queen f7 check here i want to give a sample line it's not forced like queen f4 queen g5 we take yeah let's go queen f8 check here it's cleaner yeah queen f8 king h5 we give a check from h8 we trade on h6 and we go rook c7 this actually wins the pawn <laughs> i mean i assume it's a draw and yeah magnus just makes a quiet move here just goes queen f4 without uh, without giving any more checks, which is yeah. yeah, this is why I wanted to play King H6 to yeah, to very stop unpleasant. some this from happening. Yeah, and now you're just sitting there panicking because you can't find the move. Yeah, and let's just show the difference. Yeah, that now yeah. Queen G5 this, is met by check. Yeah. This is you just getting checkmated because the rook got the C7 with a check, and you no longer have this H5 square. So I'm guessing you have to play something like King G8 right now and hope that after rook c7 you have some kind of a perpetual but you don't maybe you're no, just no. lost no uh, no i think with, with this time situation it's it's basically game over yeah i just yeah. don't uh, don't or maybe feel like... maybe you actually have to play like rook d3 rook d7 and give up the pawn h4 with check <clears throat> and yeah, uh you, i mean if you know at least that you can get to queen's end game maybe it's it's all yeah rook d3 played yeah he had to because everything else looked yeah. inadequate I think what we should practically explain that uh, actually black is very lucky to add the pawn on g6 because this pawn on g6 gives a nice shelter for black's king. Yeah, mm -hmm. so black will be able to hide on h7. On the other hand, if this pawn would not be on g6, but it would be on h7 or h6, then black would always have a big, big trouble with his king. It's, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, in, any, anything can happen in these look-end games. Yeah, absolutely. And the position on our screen is actually kind of surprising to me because... Uh, this looks like a very comfortable draw. In fact, I, I'm too lazy to check, but I would suggest that it very easily could be a draw without the pawn on b5. <laughs> and there is still a pawn on b5 on the board, so... Uh, yeah, looks like Magnus is probably not winning today. I don't think I've seen very many, and it's still possible to lose them. You know, people lose all kinds of seemingly very simple positions. Like if they, if they get to like g5 and h5 and you still don't have an immediate perpetual, I'm not sure all of those are still a draw. I mean, obviously Magnus will continue pushing, but yeah, I, I think as long as uh, as long as Georg doesn't lose his uh, doesn't lose his cool here, he should hold very very comfortably. It's a bit scary to make a move without a check, which leaves the pawn on b5 unprotected, but White cannot connect to it without access to the e file. So like queen f7, we can even go king h6. And then if white has to play g4, we, we have checks from, from below now, queen h1, queen exactly. uh, g1, and so forth. And I can't really expect uh, Magnus to really pose any problems. And, and he goes g4, so what does it mean? That he's willing to... to... No, that's, that's basically a draw for, no? g4, queen h1, check. 
Yes. And okay, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand what Magnus has in mind. I think he's just, he, he knows it's a draw, so he basically is offering a draw because unless, no, 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 like King H2, sorry, King H4, we go Queen H2, uh, King, G5. King G5, Queen G2, King F5, Queen mm -hmm. F2. My question is after Queen F2, King E6, can I take on F6 or not? Yeah, but afterwards, there is also the other scenario that suddenly out of tiredness or some, some blindness, you, you blunder something. Yeah, actually, B5, B4 on the board. By and the way, then you will regret it that why on earth did I want to calculate when I had no reason to yeah. calculate? Okay, I mean, it will be an incredible save by, by Georg, but he, to be honest, he caused his uh, trouble to himself. Yeah, he, he was absolutely fine, comfortable, no reason to, to, to have those scary moments, but he survived them and seems to, seems to be safe. King G3, Queen F2, and then the king is in the, is in the, uh, is in the corner, right? You... You just ah, but hang the, uh, ah because he he gave not queen h1 check. I mean, ah, queen yeah, h1 yeah, yeah. yeah, ah, that's the thing. Yeah, he chose not to even, yeah, queen h1 was an immediate draw because that's not an option. You you no longer have that option, but he gave a check from here, and that gave Magnus this choice of playing. Uh, yeah, queen and f2. just so to king. highlight that, yeah, this case, yeah, there, that would be, that would be a mistake. Time. Yeah, that would be a bit of a mistake. Yes, yeah, queen e7 check. So King G8, just to highlight that King H6, the active move runs into checkmate yeah. in G5. That would be terrible. So of course, yeah, Black goes back with the King to G8. I'm yeah, guessing you choose you choose any square. I think both of them are fine. Yeah, it's a matter of taste which one which one you prefer. Shouldn't matter. Don't see any way to get mated. So I'm just wow. But look at this. Georg even goes King H8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. also completely fine. Yeah. Yeah, Magnus continues in my spirit. Yeah, H6, yeah. King H5, put the poker face on like I'm threatening something. Yeah, I mean, okay, signal, and then the Georg is down to a minute. Yeah. Uh, do we maybe have the the video? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. We could maybe actually just, yeah, Georg goes B2, and yeah, I think Magnus kind of has to pull the plug now because if you, like, if you make a quiet move here and the B pawn wins, you know, you, you really feel tremendously stupid. Yeah. No, of course, okay, Magnus can maybe try to get his queen to b7 with check, yeah, the, so that he, but how do you get there, yeah, that's also, a queen e4 check, yeah, there. there you go. Yeah, okay, queen e4, and now, can he play g5 after king h8 without allowing the, the, the pawn to queen? He probably can, actually, yeah. Queen f7, stalemate, the, the queen against rook and, and bishop. Hang on a second, king h8, king h8, white can play king g6 here, and you, ha and you have to give up the pawn. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh my God! Yeah, King G6. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! And apparently, apparently, King G8 was completely drawn, but King H8 now. Magnus will play King G6, and I and mean, hang on, what what is the big difference? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, hang on, that is is the Queen G7 check and stalemate uh, the idea if it's King <gasps> G8, oh right? My, oh my God! Show it, you, we have to show it to the viewers, right? Yes, I mean, let me get this. This yeah, is if, so cute. Yeah, if the king goes back to g8, then after king g6, we have this this kind of stalemate idea. Queen g7 takes, and then b1 queen. And if queen f5, we make We play queen e4 or, or what? Yeah, we just... Yeah, we, we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah, and then Magnus goes king g6. Yeah, that, yeah that's b1... exactly the reason why we were saying like... Okay, just calculate the force line till the end. Just don't give all these practical chances. Yeah, and we, I think judging by the evaluation, B1 is still a draw uh, because it says like 160, and I think 160 in this position is not enough. But I think this one Magnus actually probably wins because now he can play forever and Georg is on 20 seconds and there is no force draw because... As far as I can tell, there is no at least no immediate perpetual. It's just still a draw because, as we know, G and H just doesn't win against against the king on H8 with precise computer play. But yeah, I mean, try showing precise computer play on 20 seconds against the world champion. What? No. No, he yeah, obviously he played queen c6 check. Yeah, like queen c6 it's, uh, check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's clearly. A, I will even correct it. I will put it there. I guess we'll just watch it full screen because we, we're not going to be we're not going to be uh, able to analyze it properly. So if we can just full screen the full screen the board, it would be good. So what this does is just make you sit there 
kind of hating life and waiting for something to finally happen. And it just makes you more and more nervous and makes you less and less sure about what's going on. <clears throat> yeah, and Magnus also King G5. Yeah, this is what I said, mm -hmm. that maybe even you don't want to give this queen a check possibility. And and yeah, let, let's not forget that Georg is now in a state of shock. It was not planned that he has to give up the B pawn. He, he Absolutely to not. Use, no. Yeah, he wanted to use that pawn to guarantee and see Also, it also incredibly cute variation here because the machine goes queen d5 check. This one we can maybe show on the screen. Queen d5, queen f5, queen d8. It looks like it's an immediate blunder because queen f6 check. And then we have king h7. <laughs> wow. Which is, uh, once again, like... How easy is this? And he's already not chosen this square, which means that after queen f5, he can no longer give a check from this diagonal. Like he, he, he gave a check from c5, and now queen e7 actually does lose because there will be no stalemates. Um, and I'm not sure if this is a draw anymore. Yeah, um, queen, queen yeah, check, like, apparently computer hates it. Yeah, apparently this is now gone for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. I give up. So yeah, just queen 14 now for some reason. Yeah, queen f4, uh, queen c5, and you just go king g6, and uh, the checks actually run out. So he had to see, he actually had to see the the queen d5, d8, king h7 trick. Yeah, it, it was basically impossible because as we, as we yeah. said, he was in a state of shock, yeah? Yeah, this is just over now because queen c2, queen f5, and you run out of checks, and you have to yes. allow queen f6 check, and you resign. Yeah, and, and you can see on the body language of Magnus, yeah, he's very pleased and Georg designs. Wow. Yeah, very, very, very dramatic finish to this game because Georg defended really, really well. But as we were, like, after, after Magnus played G2, G4, we kept on saying that you really should try to invest the time in making sure that this is the last calculation you do in the game. And he had, an op he had a very, very clean force draw at that moment. He chose not to even... Uh, look for it, and uh, uh, ended up. It ended up costing him, costing him the game.